everyone. My name is Paige gibbons Backus, and I am here with Emerging Civil War here in the beautiful Stevenson's Ridge as a part of this year's Emerging Civil War Symposium in which our theme is Forgotten Battles. And so as a part of the symposium, not only are we focusing on battles and campaigns, but for those of you who could not be here today, we wanted to provide a little bit of an insight into what all of the speakers are going to be talking about in case you missed it. So I am here with historian and author Sarah K. Byerly. And so she has done a session about the Newmarket campaign. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. So the Battle of Newmarket probably gets name recognition. People associate it with the history of Virginia Military Institute's cadets, and rightly so. But there's a lot more to the Battle of Newmarket and the Newmarket campaign as a whole. My presentation is focusing on what happened in the Shenandoah Valley as the armies moved to the clash that would become the Battle of Newmarket, and also what was happening on either side. So how does the Newmarket campaign fit into the history of what was happening in Virginia in the spring of 1864. How does it match up with what's happening in the Overland campaign? How does it match up with this other raid that's being conducted by Union Generals Crook and Averill? They're threatening the Virginia-Tennessee Railroad. So that's what we're focusing on, seeing the Siegel-Breckenridge march and conflict seeing Averill and Crook and their conflict with McCausland and Jenkins, and then trying to put it all together to get this broader sense of the New Market campaign and how it fits into the Civil War history. And hopefully we'll all come away with an understanding that there is a lot more to the New Market campaign and New Market battle than a handful of important charges. So with the theme of the symposium for this year in being forgotten battles, why do you think the Newmarket campaign has largely been forgotten compared to other things such as Gettysburg or Vicksburg? Right, I think that the Newmarket campaign gets overshadowed by the battle itself and then of course by all the large scale fighting that's happening in other parts of Virginia. So the Newmarket campaign Somehow we, we take away this idea that all of a sudden the armies were at Newmarket, they fought the battle, the cadets made the charge, they won the battle, as the story goes, and we are left wondering, if we really think about it, how did the armies get to Newmarket? What else was happening? So I think there's a little bit of a twist when we talk about Newmarket and the Newmarket campaign as being forgotten. I think that they are known by name, but there are parts of this history that are definitely in the shadow, and I hope that the presentation is going to shed some light on those lesser known aspects of the campaign. Right. And so, I'm not going to spoil anything because we're not going to post this video until after Sarah does her presentation. And so, can you give us just a brief idea of what do you think is the most significant part of this campaign? Oh, now that, that's a tough question. I think it's going to have to be though when Union Generals Crook and Averill decide to pull back away from the railroad because, and this is good, this would be a spoiler if you were seeing it before my talk, the news of their retreat comes to John C. Breckinridge, who is the Confederate commander, and he knows by the morning of May 15th that that Union threat in southwestern Virginia has been turned back. And that information, combined with an, a message that he had just received from Robert E. Lee, who's fighting in the eastern part of the state, makes him decide to change his strategy for what will be the Battle of Newmarket. Instead of fighting defensively, he decides to switch into offensive. And that really sets the stage for the Battle of Newmarket. But I don't know that Breckenridge would have made that decision the way that he did. I don't know that Newmarket would have been fought in the way it was fought if the Union threat had not been turned back, if Crook and Averill had not started to retreat back into West Virginia. Great, well thanks so much for spending a few minutes with us. Uh, for all of those of you who are watching it on YouTube, um, you can also look back at our social media for Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and see different uh, snippets of the symposium. And also C-SPAN is here recording some of the lectures as well. So in the next few weeks, you'll actually be able to see some of the lectures in full. So thanks for tuning in and stay tuned for more videos.